Welcome to a new video on YouTube channel of tutorialspedia.com. In this video tutorial, I will explain how we can use Eclipse IDE to create an abstract visual. As in many scenarios, uh, for example, if you are implementing a web service uh, in MuleSoft or in any other tool that you are going to use for your integrations, you will need uh, a visual file if you are going to have a top down approach where you contract first and then implement the uh, backend logic for your web service operations. So in case of SOAP web services, many people on my channel ask me that uh, what are the steps uh, that we need to follow in order to create a visual file. Uh, if you are using Tipco Businessworks or some other tools, uh, they provide uh, these options uh, within their tools and you can create your abstract visual and then proceed with the implementation directly within that. But uh, there are certain tools where uh, this uh, option is not readily available. So you need to rely on some other tools in order to generate a, a visual file and then import that visual file into your project there and start implementing it. So in the in, in case uh, of different options that are available, one of the uh, option available is the Eclipse IDE, uh, which provides us quite easier and uh, fr user friendly manner, developer friendly manner rather, uh, to implement uh, SOAP web service and to construct uh, the basics skeleton of our visual file and then once we have that visual file that abstract visual file then uh, we can import uh, they export that from our uh, eclipse ide and then use it in any of the tools be it mulesoft or any other tool where you are going to do the actual implementation so without further ado let's jump into uh, the actual part of this video tutorial uh, in eclipse ide where i will show you basic uh, skeleton of a visual file, how it gets generated, how we can create a visual, how we can add uh, different operations, and how we can define uh, request and response uh, schemas for these uh, different operations. So I have already opened Eclipse IDE, and uh, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to create a new project. I'll right click new and I will choose project. And for this particular purpose, I will choose Java EE and then within that, I will choose utility project. Uh, this option of creating a visual file is available in any type of uh, Java Enterprise Edition project that you want to create in uh, Eclipse. But for me, I will just go with the utility project and just click next. Let's give a name to this uh, project. I will give it a name as Visual Demo Tutorial Speedia. And I will not do anything fancy and just click finish. All right, so once you click finish, your project, utility project has been created. Now what I'm going to do without uh, going for any best practices for the folders or anything else, because that's not in the scope of this tutorial, I will just create a visual file directly. So I'll right click on the project, I'll choose new and I'll go to others. And here, uh, inside the web services, you have option visual file. So this is the option that you use in order to create an abstract visual. So I'll just click on next and I will have to provide a name for the visual file that I'm going to create. Let's create a employee service visual file and I will name it as employee service dot visual and I'll click on next. And here you have the options uh, if you want to change the target namespace uh, by default it's example.org example so just uh, uh, change it to something that you want i will change it to tutorialspedia.com slash employee service and the prefix i just want to change it to emp and here you have the option what kind of protocol since we want to create it uh, with the soap protocol soap messaging protocol so i'll keep it as soap and then you have option that which type of uh, binding uh, you want to use. Whether you either you want to use document style or RPC style uh, uh, visual files. So let's keep it default document literal and click finish. So here is the source, but uh, uh, most of the people uh, don't uh, feel comfortable just uh, going into the source and directly updating the source. Rather, uh, the drag and drop option or uh, the uh, a developer friendly or a user friendly option that is provided is the design option. So let me just zoom it a little. So if you see by default, when we created this abstract visual file uh, with the name employee service dot so we got some uh, basic skeleton already created and it has employee service within that we have one operation. 
uh, i hope that you are already aware of the basic concepts of the wisdom that uh, wisdom what wisdom is and what exactly it contains in terms of different operations messages four types and different parts so if you are not aware of this uh, you can go through and uh, read about it to understand the basic concepts but i am assuming for the sake of this tutorial that you have a basic idea what the wisdom is and that's why you are here in this tutorial trying to understand how you can construct an abstract wisdom so for the employee service uh, they, we have an operation already available available here so what i'm going to do is that i'm going to rename it so let's uh, rename it to uh, get employee and here we have to specify what type of input parameters and what uh, are going to be uh, uh, made available for this uh, operation of the web services uh, web service and what will be the uh, output structure so for the input parameters if you just click on this arrow uh, it will take you to the uh, inline schema that uh, is going to be used for the input and output parameters so for the get employee type in the input uh, by default if you see it's just a string uh, let me zoom it a little and it's in with a string so we are going to change it to something else uh, i will change it to uh, employee id emp id so basically what i want is that whenever uh, someone is going to use this web service for the actual implementation uh, the operation will be get employee and that one will be expecting employee id as an input and we can change the type as well by default it was string so let's change it to integer okay now what we did is that we just provided one option uh, as an input which is employee id so i'll switch back and i'll go to the output so the response i'll click again on the arrow and now for the response if you see by default it's just a string output but we don't want to use this rather we will add our own so i'll delete this and now i'll just click right click here and i'll choose add element and in the response what i want is that i want details of the employee so employee name and this is going to be a string and i want to add another element with the name employee uh, depart department dep and then i want to add an ele another element uh, salary and let's change the type of this salary to double and let's do another thing just right click and if you see here uh, you have the option of uh, uh, doing different uh, changes for example if you want to make it uh, required or optional or uh, it is going to be repeating those things you can do so i'm going to make it optional so if you see uh, now it has zero dot dot one this means that it has been set as optional so let's keep it simple and have only these three output elements for this visual if you want uh, you can have e add even another set of complex element uh, within this uh, let's 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 make it a little complex not uh, to keep it this much simple so uh, what i will do is that i will add another element and this element uh, i will add as uh, uh, skills so the employee might have multiple skills so this instead of string i want to change it to another type so i'll choose new and it's going to be another type let's make it a skill type click okay now if you go here okay let me change it okay so if if you go here the skill type that we defined i'll click on it and inside this i will add element so i will add skill id and i will add another element as skill description okay so we have two uh, sub element for this skill type so skill id i'm going to make it as uh, integer and skill description we will keep it as string okay now we have uh, the response uh, for get employee response having employee name employee department salary and skill you could have created as anonymous local uh, type as well but uh, i created it as a separate type okay so now if we just go into the source tab we can see that whatever changes with that we did okay let me zoom it so that you can see it better you can see that we have complete wisdom which which has uh, its a header which it has its definitions the target namespace that we defined when creating tutorialspedia.com 
and then if you see that uh, we have uh, all other information like uh, uh, what are the elements get employee and inside it is uh, showing uh, element uh, with the name employee id with the type integer and then you can also if you go further down you will be able to see other details like uh, get employee response and this has a sequence and within sequence it has all elements if you see here min max occurs is equal to one min occurs is equal to zero this means that the salary element is optional and inside this we have skills and again this is of skill type and within the skill type it will have two elements with skill id and skill description okay and here you can see that uh, uh, because the basic skeleton of a visual is that it has uh, uh, port type within port type it have messages operations and within operation it refer it refers to the messages and messages internally contain uh, reference to different uh, xsd elements so here you can see we have uh, get employee request and get, get employee response as two visual messages and internally they are referring to uh, the parameters that we have and if you go further down, you can see that we have details of the visual binding as well. Here you can see that the binding with the name employee service. And then if you further uh, go down, you can see that it is using its literal. So we selected uh, whatever encoding you select accordingly, it will be updated. So basically uh, what we did is that we created our visual file uh, in a very uh, simple and easy manner using uh, this uh, tool Eclipse IDE and within that we can create any number of operations so next what i will do is that i will add another operation for that purpose i will just right click and choose the option add operation and for this operation i'm going to name it as add employee so we have now two operations as part of our visual and here in the add employee uh, what we will do we will have to specify what is the input parameter and then in the response in the output section we will specify the response for the input if you just click on this arrow then you come here where you can specify whatever input you want ideally what we should have done previously is that we should have created an another type over here with the name let me zoom it a bit out so previously we just uh, added uh, employee without adding a type but we added a scale type so what i will do is that i will add another complex type over here and i will name it as uh, employee type because I want to reuse the same type twice as an input to the add employee and as an output to the get employee. So I'll just click on this and inside this I will add the elements. So let's add employee ID as an integer. And then let me zoom and I will add employee name. And this one I'm going to keep it as string and then skills. And since we already created a type with the name uh, skill type, so I'll just click on the uh, option of browse. And here you will be able to see that the skill type should be uh, already in our list. So skill type, we will just select. So you can see that uh, now we will have an, a new type, employee type within which employee ID, employee name and skill type, skills with, with the skill type. Now I'll go back to the visual and what I will do is that I will change again for the input of the get employee for the get employee previously what I did I created this uh, all the elements inside so what I will do now is that uh, for the response not for the request for the get employee response instead of adding these elements one by one over here I will just delete all this and I will just add an element and refer to that Okay, I added the element and I'm going to refer to the new uh, type that I created with the name employee type. Okay, so let's uh, rename it to something meaningful employee. And this is of type employee type. Okay, now uh, for the first operation, the input is employee ID, output is of type employee type, which is our custom type. And for the add employee, in the request now I'm going to refer to the type that we created for the employee type so I'll click on browse and I will choose employee type so this I will rename to employee okay so the employee uh, with the employee type is the input for this second operation 
and for the add employee response i will click on this and i will just uh, change it to response message and we will keep it a string and we can add uh, another element with the name reference so we assume that whenever employee will be added there will be a reference that will be returned back to the client which will be maybe employee id so we will just change it to integer and we will keep it, keep it optional because it will be returned only in the scenarios where an employee has been successfully added and we have a reference to that uh, employee which got added into database or uh, whichever storage we selected so here we will set multiplicity to optional because we want to keep uh, references optional so now if i go back to my visitor and uh, in the design uh, mode you can see that we have employee service with two operations get employee and add employee and get employee has input with the type uh, employee type which is our custom type and output is get employee response which is just uh, uh, sorry get employee request is uh, uh, expecting employee id as an input and get employee response is uh, returning employee type which is our custom type and in the add employee add employee request is expecting employee type as an input and in the response we are sending a custom message with a reference id and a uh, response message if we go now to the source tab we can see that accord whatever the changes we did all of that has been updated over here so we have now uh, add employee operation and we have uh, get employee operation as well so here is the get employee request for the get employee operation and uh, we can see that the entire uh, structure of the visdel has been created and uh, this is so easier and simple with the uh, tools like eclipse and there are some other tools as well uh, which make our, li our life quite easier so now what you will have to do for example if you are implementing a uh, server side of a web service in mulesoft or in any other tool uh, in, or in any other ESB or, uh, or maybe in some uh, native uh, programming language, you can simply take this WSDL file and start implementing. This is an abstract WSDL, it's not a concrete WSDL. So abstract WSDL is used on the server side as it just gives you a skeleton of your web service uh, for the top-down approach of implementing your uh, web services. And then once you will imp implement the web service uh, on your server, uh, which can be any uh, type of server, then once you will be exposing your web service, you will be exposing a URL for the actual concrete visitor. That concrete visitor will be used by the clients in order to consume these operations. So that's it from this uh, simple and a basic type of video. Uh, which I created uh, based on the request that I received in the comment section for many of my tutorials. Uh, people asking that what is the exact procedure if you want to create an abstract visitor first, because most of the tutorials that I uh, covered for MuleSoft and other products uh, about uh, implementing a SOAP web service, I started with this top-down approach uh, with uh, having a visitor readily available. So the first step is to create the WSDL only then uh, you can go uh, on top of that by, for implementation part. So I hope that uh, the information that has been conveyed in this tutorial is helpful for you. If you have any questions, feel free to write in the comment section. I'll try my best to respond to your questions. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more videos in future. Thank you.